I was never bored on the set. Not one minute for eight years was I bored. Does that sound so disgustingly Pollyanna you can hardly stand it? What made you take the role on, on Falcon Crest? Money. <laughs> <laughs> I like honesty. <laughs> it's good. No, I was, uh, frankly, I was uh, pretty hungry at the time. Hi, I'm John Tesh, and today on One on One, we visit with one of television's most popular actresses, Elizabeth Montgomery, and her companion of 18 years, actor Robert Foxworth. Lizzie, as she is known to her friends, made her television debut on her father's show, Robert Montgomery Presents, in 1951, playing what else? Her father's daughter. She was a regular on the show for several years, but the role that made her a star was playing Samantha on Bewitched. The show stayed on the air for eight years and earned Elizabeth Montgomery five Emmy nominations as Best Actress in a Comedy Series. She's had another four Emmy nominations for her dramatic work. Among her most memorable performances was as the axe-wielding Lizzie Borden. Robert Foxworth made his Broadway debut in 1969 in the chorus of Henry V and appeared in his first television series in 1970 in a show called Storefront Lawyers. But television audiences know him best as Chase Gilberti, the role he played for six years on Falcon Crest. Perhaps we should also tell you about some of the parts Robert turned down that were offered to him. Among them, the role of Trapper John on MASH and the role of J.R. on Dallas. Stay tuned for Robert Foxworth and Elizabeth Montgomery. Bewitched. With a twitch of her nose, Elizabeth Montgomery landed one of the most successful sitcoms of the 60s. She was the pretty suburban house witch with a mortal husband who never knew what to expect. The show premiered in 1964 and was an instant hit. The premise was simple. Samantha had to give up her supernatural powers for her earthbound husband, Darren. It's really harder to break the habit than I thought. The show ran for eight seasons and made Elizabeth a star. It can still be seen in reruns today. And Samantha did find those supernatural powers came in handy each week. Sore head! Elizabeth was born in Los Angeles. Her father was actor Robert Montgomery, and her mother gave up an acting career after marrying. Two years after graduating from the Academy of Dramatic Arts in New York with some theater and television under her belt, Elizabeth made her film debut in The Court Martial of Billy Mitchell with Gary Cooper. Oh, my, it's good to see you again. We've missed you and needed you. I'll set another place. After a brief early marriage, Elizabeth married actor Gig Young in 1957, and the marriage lasted six years. Then she married director-producer William Asher, who later produced Bewitched, and they have three children. The marriage ended in 1974. Elizabeth has not done a series since Bewitched, but has become one of the most sought-after stars of TV movies. Over the years, she's played a wide range of characters, both fictional and real, including at a place in Mrs. Sundance. Now explain. What are you doing here? And what are you after? Her co-star was Robert Foxworth, whom she fell in love with and has been living with ever since. Abby? Among her many TV movies, Elizabeth is probably best known for her portrayal of the legendary Lizzie Borden. She once again co-stars with her live-in love, Robert Foxworth, in an upcoming TV movie with murder in mind. Don't you tell me about bruises. We spoke with Elizabeth and Robert at their three-acre estate in Beverly Hills. You've done so much great dramatic work. Uh, but there is, of course, a role that is burned in everybody's minds, <laughs> especially mine, because it was one of my favorite oh, shows, right. which was uh, right. Bewitched, mm -hmm. uh, a great comedy, and, and really it has endured. What was the appeal? I think we made it um, as honest as possible. I think the writers that we used were as good as possible. Uh, the cast was extraordinary. I mean, my gosh, what a cast we had. I mean, really super, super people. Morris Evans, Agnes Moorhead. Golly, Marion Lorne, Paul Lind, and I was never bored on the set. Not one minute for eight years was I bored. Does that sound so disgustingly Pollyanna you can hardly stand it? No, it Because doesn't. it's not. It was like going to college for eight years and taking an in-depth course in what you really wanted to do. So it was very, very exciting for me. I mean, I learned a lot of stuff. A lot. Do you get upset when people ask you to do the nose thing? No, not really. It's just so crazy. But I'm not going to do it for you, so there. The thing is, it, 
if I'm tired, if I've had one glass of wine, or if I'm inclined to get the giggles, there is no way to do it. Now, you can figure out which one is my excuse now. I mean, uh -huh. obviously, I haven't had a glass of wine. I'm not tired yet. And, I mean, sitting here doing it, it's just very hard if it doesn't come out of something. You were working very hard on a series, Bewitched, at the time you had some youngsters. Mm -hmm. is, um, is that a difficult thing to be, you know, full-time mom and also <laughs> work so hard? Yes, it is. And, and as a result, I will never win any Mother of the Year awards. I hope I'm getting better. <laughs> and, you know, everybody, I think, parents and kids have to grow up together. I mean, nobody really can, can ready you for, for motherhood, whether you work or whether you don't. I mean, parenting is probably the toughest job anybody's ever had. And I'm not, I haven't been very good at it, but like I say, I think, I'm, I think I've gotten better. Did you learn anything from your parents about how to bring up your kids? Uh, I learned some things how to and some things how not, I think. But that, you know, they did the best they could, too. I mean, I think parents do that. Your dad was a celebrated actor and director. Did you ever realize when you were growing up who he was, who he really was? I never realized that that's who or what he was until, gosh, I don't know. I think somebody in school told me. It was kind of like finding out there was no Santa Claus, oh. I guess. <laughs> but it was like, did you know? And I went, no. I, you know, it never occurred to me that he was doing something odd or wonderful mm -hmm. or not so wonderful. Were you proud of him? Yeah. Yeah, and it's funny because I never saw a lot of the movies that he did. and Because uh, growing up, everybody felt that there were better things to do than go to the movies. I never quite understood that because everybody I knew went. And um, so I kind of caught up with a lot of the stuff that he did after I grew up, which in a way was kind of fun. How do you think he felt? Did you know immediately how he felt about his little girl uh, deciding to become an actress? Um, yeah, he told me. He said, if, if that's what you want to do, you're going to really want to have to do it because there's no room out there for some gutless wonder wandering around. You know, there are too many talented people. And he said it is one of the most horrifyingly ego-blasting, destructive, awful businesses that you could possibly get into. And he said, I wouldn't really wish it on anybody I care even a little bit about. So knowing that he cared more than just a little bit about me, I thought, whoops, you know, this is really a tough one. However, after that conversation, he did say to me that when it is rewarding and when, I mean, you know, when it is good, it is such a high, you cannot imagine it. And he's right. Do you remember your first professional acting job? Um, yeah, it was a job that had been uh, promised me by dad, actually, and we played father and daughter. And my first line to him was, hi, Pop, as he walked in the door. And I said, hi, Pop, and he went, <laughs> and I said, oh, uh, well, did, did you come in to ask me about so-and-so? And I said, well, you must have because, and he said, yeah, that's right. But, and what had happened, evidently, I found out later, he, told, he, said, he said, we'd rehearsed all week and never thought anything about it, and here we were on the air, and she turned around and said, hi, Pop, and I looked at her and said, Jesus Christ, it's Liz. <laughs> <laughs> and he suddenly realized who it was he was working with, and it was his daughter, right? And he just, he said, I couldn't think of anything except, my God, I had no idea that it was going to be this terrifying. And I was too stupid to be, to be scared. Was it ever tough being Robert Montgomery's daughter? Um, yeah, absolutely. A name will open doors. You know, you, you just got to face up to the fact every once in a while that your parent the one that happened to be the actor, was not necessarily adored all the time. And so there were people that didn't like him. And as a result, uh, there were people that decided they didn't like me just because. And I, you know, th those are things you kind of have to cope with. And that's, that's, that's a little tough, but you get used to it, I guess. Robert Foxworth. Yes. He